Do you want to learn how to shuffle poker chips in hard mode without risking fatal injuries? You need to shuffle poker chips in the most intimidating way, and that's using hard mode. And this is especially true if you rely on your table image to win instead of actual poker skill, like me. You have to find a way to get an edge over your opponents in creative ways. I'm going to teach you this intimidating tactic and a tool I've created for perfecting it today on Jack Ace. What up donkeys, Jack Hayes here with jackhayes.com where I talk about my three favorite topics, gambling, crypto, and STEM. You've probably seen flight simulators, driving simulators, and even goat simulators. And now I've created a simulator that helps train you on optimal chip shuffling strategy without the dangers of shuffling real chips. I now introduce to you the Jack Ace Chip Shuffling Simulator. To check out the simulator, go to chipsimulator.jackace.com. Basically, this tool helps you anticipate what to expect when you shuffle chips in hard mode. If you don't know what hard mode is, you can check out my full video on how to shuffle poker chips. You can click on this link or check out this video's description below. So hard mode is when you take two equally sized stacks of chips in two different colors and you keep shuffling them until the two colors are reunited into two uniform stacks. And you want to shuffle your chips perfectly or else the chips will forever be in a state of disarray and your poker table image will be completely blown. So what does a perfect shuffle look like? So let me demo a perfect shuffle with two stacks of four chips each, four red and four black. When you shuffle them perfectly, the two uniform stacks appear to be reunited with their brethren every three shuffles. So let's check this out in the simulator. The first thing we do is click the table row that shows the data for four chips per stack. And according to the chart, the chips should be reunited every three shuffles. So let's simulate. I'm going to click this button here, which shuffles with a new chip on top for every pass. That just means that there's a new chip on top and a new chip on bottom of the new stack for every shuffle. And we're going to click this button one, two, three times. And you can see the colors are reunited. And we can do the same thing with two stacks of eight red and eight black chips. This time we need to shuffle them one, two, three four times to reunite the colors. And that's what we get when we shuffle the in real life chips. What up donkeys, Jack Hayes here, and we are here in the chip simulator. If you look at the URL here, it is chipsimulator.jackhayes.com. And we're gonna start off with four chips on two stacks, red and black. If you look, each chip is numbered chip zero through chip seven. So chip zero is what used to be on top before the single stack was broken into two stacks and the top stack put on the left. So black was on top, red was on bottom, and we are gonna shuffle this one, two, three times. And now the colors are reunited, but if you look at the actual numbering, you'll see that all the chips are in reverse order. So what used to be on top is now on the bottom, chip zero, and what is now on top used to be what was on bottom, chip seven. And you can see that the two colors are reunited, but they are not in the original order. And if I shuffle them three more times, one, two, three, now you can see they are back in the original order. And we can do this as well with eight chips per stack. But now instead of it taking three shuffles to get them back into unified colors, it's gonna take us one, two, three, four times. And again, with the situation with four chips per stack, the chips are unified, but they are in reverse order. So now what is on the bottom used to be what was on top. What is on the top used to be what was on the bottom. And again, we can do it four more times. One, two, three, four. And now they are back in the original order. And you can see that all chip stacks will eventually get back to their original order. And the chip stacks don't have to be a power of two. So if we start with five chips, if we wanted to get back into unified colors, we can do it five times. One, two, three, four, five. But again, these chips are reversed, so now we have to do it another five times, one, two, three, four, five, for a total of 10 shuffles to get it back into the original order. Now, I have this other button here. If you click on zero on top, that basically maintains the same top chip and the same bottom chip. So basically, you are shuffling everything in between because those two chips stay in their same position. So I'm gonna click this six times, one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see here, when I keep the same chip on top, it takes us six shuffles to get back into the original order. And you will probably notice that this number is the same as this number because essentially we've just eliminated 
the top and bottom chip and we did a perfect shuffle with a new chip on top. So you'll see that this number here, three, matches this number here, three. This number here, six, matches this number here, six. So when you shuffle seven chips at a time, it's gonna to revert to what is the same number for six chips at a time, but using a new chip on top. And you can notice that there's a special condition with everything that's a power of two. So if you look at four chips per stack or eight chips total, it takes us three shuffles to get to reunited colors. And you might notice that eight is two to the third power. And if you look at 16 chips or eight chips per stack, 16 is two to the fourth power. If you look at 32 chips or 16 chips per stack, 32 is two to the fifth power and it takes us one, two, three, four, five shuffles to get back to reunited colors. And the same thing if we go to 64 chips, 32 chips per stack, 64 is two to the sixth power. So we have to shuffle this one, two, three, four, five, six times to get them back into the unified colors. If we want to get them back into the original order, we have to do it another six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you might also notice that if we have 26 chips per stack or 52 chips, basically this is a deck of cards, 52 cards per deck. If you did a perfect shuffle with a deck of cards, if you shuffled them 26 times, let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the cards are back in order, except completely reversed. So what used to be on top of the deck of cards is now on bottom. What used to be on the bottom is now on top. And we can do it another 26 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And now the deck of cards is back in the original order. So we have different situations for chip stacks that are a power of two. We will always get back to the original order eventually if you do a perfect shuffle every time, keeping a new chip on top. And if you shuffle any stack of chips and you keep the same chip on top, it's basically shuffling with a new chip on top for one less chip per stack. So that's what I learned. That's what I discovered by writing this chip simulator. And I have yet to figure out the pattern of these values. So it's a very strange numerical pattern. 2, 4, 3, 6, 10, 12, 4, 8, 18, 6, 11, 20. I have not found a consistent way of calculating what this number is gonna be, except for the cases where we are talking about a power of two. So if anyone out there wants to figure that out, I would love to hear how to calculate this number. So I hope the simulator helps you out and helps you develop your table image. If you enjoyed this video, remember to smash the like button and subscribe. Always gamble responsibly and peace out donkeys.